But here he says, now watch this. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Now notice that be thou removed, that's a command. Is that right? That's not a prayer. You're talking to the mountain and you're saying, be thou, thou what? Thou is the mountain. So you're talking to the mountain. You're not talking to God about the mountain. It says, be thou removed. Now watch, it's telling you to be, you're telling it to be moved and telling it what to do. Be cast into the sea. If you say be removed, it can move an inch. But you have to say, no, do this, and you determine what, what it's to do. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah. So he says, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, shall come to pass. That's future. You have to believe what you're saying now will be in the future. You get that? Will happen. He shall have whatsoever he saith. When? Now or in the future? Well, you're going to say it now, but it's going to be in the future you shall have. Do you get that? So you have to talk to it while it's still a problem. You won't talk to it if it's not a problem. People say, well, I'm not going to talk to that. That'd be silly. Man, people talk to plants. They talk to everything. But you need to realize, and, and they've already proven, when you talk to plants, it actually affects them. So I don't know, this whole idea about words affecting things, I don't even know why it's a question anymore. Exactly. But it's funny, we think, well, it'll affect a plant, but it won't affect something bigger. Well, it affected your destiny. Come on. If your words affect your destiny, it can sure affect your temporal situation now. Amen. Amen? So he says here, now watch, verse 24, therefore, now get this, because you can have what you say, okay, because of that, because of this thing, okay, <clears throat> therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, so now he's talking about praying, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So now you notice how the praying and the saying match each other? Yeah. You see? He says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Is that future? Yeah. Well, you believe you receive them now, but then you have to, you, in the future, you shall have them. Is that right? Yeah. So that means that whatever the situation is right now, you talk to that situation and it shall come to pass whatever you're saying about it. Now, talking to the situation, let's say you have a tumor. You don't talk to the tumor. Tumor, you're, man, you're a big problem to me. I don't like the fact that you are such a big problem. Uh, you're causing me pain. You're no, that's not how you talk to the problem. No. You're encouraging the problem. Come on. You understand? You have to talk to the problem. You have to tell the mountain, what do you want it to do? Tumor, remove yourself from hence. Amen. Amen. Be cast into the sea. Whatever, well, how do you want to say it? Whenever I tell tumors to go, I usually tell them, tumor, you will dissolve, disintegrate, and disappear. Amen. Then I usually add, uh, you will do so without any adverse side effects. Amen. Why? Because I have found that if there is a, like a blood clot and you start commanding it to dissolve and disintegrate and all that, then pieces of it will dissolve and it can actually go and cause a stroke. So you have to remove the thing. You speak the end result. You will leave with no adverse side effects. See, that's recently when we were um, in a church and before the service, when I usually do it anyway, but I made a point of doing this so people could hear it. And I told demons, I said, uh, you will not manifest. I said, we will cast you out, but you will not manifest. I said, you will leave them. And why? Because it ain't, it ain't your show. It's Jesus' show. Come on. Amen? And a lot of people, when, when demons manifest, people start looking at what, and they talk more about the manifestation of the demon than they do the deliverance from the person. And so that's one of the reasons why I deal with that. Why? Because the enemy will try to do stuff. And so you have to take authority of that thing overhead. So what I'll do, I speak first, say you will not manifest, right? And then I, a lot of times I'll throw in, and if you try, you will be cast out with the name of Jesus, which is going to cause you much pain, <laughs> right? That, and that's what I tell it. And so, and whenever I did that, then we had deliverance because it was a deliverance service, basically. And people were completely set free and no manifestations of devils. And, and the pastor 
made note. He said, this is, this is a good way to do this, right? Because he had been through some other stuff. So anyway, now, but now notice, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So in other words, he's saying, so when you pray, what do you have to do? You have to, we know, remember all these other principles. If you're going to pray, you've got to pray according to God's will. So you take his word and you start to find the principle. In other words, uh, if you're sick, then you have to find his will. You have to know his will. What is his will? That you be healed. How do you know that? Because, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. By his stripes, you were healed. By whose stripes, we were healed. Amen? So we know God's will on that. So then we take that and we start to say to that sickness or that disease or whatever it is, whatever the problem is going on, we speak according to that. And then we say, and we bring that, that, that law okay, to bear on this situation. Say, according to the word of God, according to the law of God, sickness, you've got to go. You will go now in Jesus' name. And you start to speak. So, but now notice, that's how you have to speak normally. 